on this week's KSP News Show. We get our first look at the new resources function, but is it what you were expecting? And re-entry heat has been confirmed to be part of 1.0. All that and more on this week's KSP News Show. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jin Lee Kerman. Good morning, evening and afternoon, my fellow Kerbanauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman. Welcome back to the KSP News Show. After last week's amazing information blowout with regards to 1.0, Squad have released a load more details with regards to the next update, including re-entry heating. All that will be revealed later. However, first we have something to cover in the form of a new screenshot which has been released by Squad, showing off what appears to be the new resources system within KSP 1.0. Here is the screenshot, I shall pop it on screen now for you. It shows an ion-powered probe, maybe showing off some of the balance tweaks that could be coming within 1.0. Scanning the moon for resources, as you can see the moon is red in some places, which I'm guessing is going to work similar to how the Keythane mod works, where you scan the planet for resources and you then can land on those places and sneak the resources. Um, sneak them? I mean, take them up. <laughs> oh wow, I cannot speak today. But you can see on the end there, you can see a massive radar dish, um, which is clearly being used to scan the surface. And I actually really like the look of this little probe, and I think that these resources in, in general is actually going to make bases, as I said in my last episode of KSP News, um, I think it's going to make resources and exploring other planets, particularly ones such as Gilly and the Moon perhaps that you don't find as special. Um, I'm going to think it's going to make it a lot more useful and a lot more interesting. What would make it even more interesting though is if the biomes where these different places, these different amounts of fuel are found is random every time that you go in and spawn a brand new game. Because let's, let's face it, if everyone, if everyone who plays Kerbal Space Program goes and then starts scanning the planet, eventually you're going to know where all the resources are. So if this is procedurally generated, which I'm guessing it's probably going to be, otherwise that kind of takes the fun out of the scanning and takes the use out of the scanning parts, I can see this being an absolutely amazing and fun addition into the game. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think about this new resources. Obviously this um, little picture here isn't representative of the final product. Um, squad do say that down below underneath the picture. But do let me know. What do you think of this? Do you think it's too similar to the Keythane mod? Do you reckon that we should implement something a little more like Carbonite? I want to know your comments down below, please do let me know because I always do read the comments. Now though, on to what you were probably waiting for when you clicked on this video. The atmospheric heat being added into the vanilla version of Kerbal Space Program. This week, or rather last week because of the scheduling of this episode, the dev notes from Mike, otherwise known as MU, read, well, the drag system is all but finished. The change in flight dynamics is fun, but we will require a rebalancing of a number of parts. We will be merging the updated lift dynamics and then hoping to push it to the QA team later this week so they can have a play. I've also been looking at implementing a new re-entry heat system to run alongside. This should be making for more interesting atmospheric experiences. Now, he said that he was only thinking about it, however, this um, this system was confirmed later on down the dev notes by MaxMaps, who says, Finalising the plan for the update. Re-entry heat is in, as you have probably already read. Now, I cannot tell you how... I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this. I think it is... I think it makes the game more realistic, and I feel... I think that's a good thing. And I think it's going to be funny watching some um, elements burn up in the atmosphere, such as dead fuel tanks and stuff like that. However, it does mean that the direct descent method, which if any of you have watched any of my Kerbal Space Program missions um, have seen, or the Evian base for any of you old time subscribers, if any of you remember that, I used a method called direct descent, where basically you get into the sphere of influence on the planet and you basically just stop yourself in orbit. Not terribly efficient, but it's the fastest way to get yourself down on the planet. 
and that involved huge amounts of re-entry heating because you're coming down almost vertical um, with regards to the atmosphere so you're getting all the heating uh, focused onto one point now I don't think that this is going to be a very active um, re-entry system because put it this way if it was like deadly re-entry like turned up to full it would it, no one would be able to play it apart from like Scott Manley and a few other like experienced Kerbinauts people like me wouldn't be able to return safely to earth and it would be kind of sad what I think that this re-entry heating might do, I think it'll be a pa more passive sort of system. Um, what I'd like it to do is maybe break apart your spacecraft. Maybe not make it explode, so to speak, but maybe just break it apart so you have a, ha a harder time in landing it. Giving you, still giving you the chance to actually, I don't know, land your craft, say if your Kerbals survive. But it could, it also adds that little bit of realism because obviously your spacecraft would break apart under atmospheric pressure. Um, but it still keeps it uh, playable enough so that perhaps lesser experienced players of Kerbal Space Program can actually play it and not just have their ships burn up like they would in real life. But again, I want to get your guys' take on it. What do you think of re-entry heat being added into the vanilla version of Kerbal Space Program? Would you like it to be like a maximum deadly re-entry total destruction of your spacecraft if you don't have a million heat shields pressed onto it? Or would you rather what I've just described, which I think is probably going to be the more likely term for it, um, just like a more passive system? Let me know in the comments down below because I really am interested and I cannot tell you how excited I am for this update. And so yeah guys, that's pretty much going to round it off for this episode. I can't believe um, some of the stuff that's come in. It's not been a very long episode, but there has been some awesome revelations. And so guys, I want to let you know, are you pumped for 1.0? Are we going to get some 1.0 hype coming in the comments section down below? If so, then I will be very happy. But yeah, once again I'd like to apologise for the scheduling of this video. It's not been the best because, well, last weekend was busy due to work and homework and uh, various birthday parties that I needed to attend because, well, friends. And, well, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you did enjoy, please do remember to leave a like and, of course, subscribe for more. And I will see you in the next one. This is Jinley Kerman signing off. And as always, stay classy.